here. We, and in what universe does a mousetrap not work? <laughs> and, okay, here we go. It, soccer ball's coming. My name is Steve Price. I run a YouTube channel called Sprice Machines. I'm 25 years old and I live in San Diego, California. I build chain reactions and dominoes full time. I do projects for online advertisements, sometimes live events like trade shows. Because chain reactions always include like household objects and everyday objects, just the perfect setting is to do it across a house and just make use of all the interesting surfaces like the kitchen counters, the fireplace, all that stuff. In the early days of YouTube, I saw all these videos that really inspired me to get started building chain reactions. There were some really large scale chain reaction videos that went all throughout people's houses. It had been like many, many years since anyone did anything of that scale. So for me, the household machine is sort of like a tribute to those. You get the bike wheel, I'll get the shovel. <laughs> Right about there is the balance. Now it's tipping. Okay, here it comes. Yeah! Wow, we snapped the axle in the middle. We could weigh the shovel and then f figure out how much it weighs and maybe find a replacement. <laughs> That's as tight as I can pull it though. Oh, make sure you get a good angle on Steve's bicep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That was nice. All right, oh, yeah. Uh, my name's Timothy Dunsmore. I'm 22, and I'm from Toronto, Ontario. So I've been building machines for many years. Probably I started in like 2006 or so when I was really little. And then I started my YouTube channel, Dr. Complicated. When you start building, you're like, I wish I could just fill up my entire house with this. But obviously you have to live in your house and there's other people living in your house and they would probably not appreciate it. I think it's just like, we're so familiar with the house setting. We're always here and we're always looking um, at like our different objects in our different spaces and thinking about how we could build a machine there or like how we could use this object that we see every day. So I guess it's kind of like a, a childhood dream come true to mess up Steve's house like this. <laughs> My name is Chris Wright. I am 21 years old and I am from Rochester, New York. I'll be a senior at Cornell University studying mechanical engineering. My YouTube channel is XX Domino Master XX. Although I have recently changed uh, the name to just being my name. So after initially coming to Steve's house here and knowing that we were gonna be building a full chain reaction machine, taking up all of his rooms and then going outdoors as well, I was a bit intimidated by this. There's a lot of space, a lot of open tables, different elevated surfaces we can use. It will be a challenge certainly to fill up all the, all the space and have all the tricks be impressive yet still reliable. 
All right, so we're gonna test the second half of the table here that I've been working on the past couple hours. Ball's gonna roll down this track around all of this acrylic paint. It's gonna hit these blue sticks one by one, hit this large domino, opening the clothespin to release the ball onto the enter button, and let's test it. So the first thing that uh, Joel and I worked on was the plant shelf behind me. We kind of decided the general order for this shelf is first, and then it will go to this one, and then go up. And one idea that I had initially when just seeing it, and the idea of using plants and making it garden focused, was that we should have water somewhere in it. In past events, even just having a watering can tip over can be a pain to test. Oh, you didn't even pour it all in. Yeah. Oh, it works. Hi, I'm Lyle Broughton. I'm 20 years old and I go to school at Hampshire College in Amherst, Massachusetts. My YouTube channel is Jack of All Spades 98. One of my favorite things about Chain Reactions is not necessarily just the tricks, but also the path that the, the, that the machine takes. There's a lot of really interesting visual motions going on here, but if you look closer, you can see some really intricate machine details, like the way that levers work, or the way that a certain release mechanism happens. I kind of started on the ledge where there's an open window where you can see into the living room and I just made a cereal box trick where they fall as dominoes and then they fall again as a sauna mod line. A lot of the time we try to put an emphasis on satisfying motions or really interesting motions or things that people are going to look at and go, oh that's really cool, even if it's not super difficult for us to make. But at the same time, any time that you have a lot of steps in a row, that sometimes offsets the simplicity. So it's not necessarily true to say that it will have fewer fails or be more reliable in any way. Like the, the, these. Pan sliding at the perfect speed is way more satisfying than a wooden ball on a white track. Yeah, there's definitely tension here. What if we added another domino? Um, yeah, that would have been smart. <laughs> yeah, we want to add the ball. Oh. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Nice, Mark. My name is Mark Robbins. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Minnesota, but I go to college at Wisconsin Madison. My YouTube channel is called Doodle Chaos. That is nice. I don't know what it is. I think the house is a good setting because a lot of people will immediately recognize all the objects that we're using. We're using green underneath the other thing. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night last night and when I sat up I accidentally hit my forehead on a lever and all of a sudden things were triggering all around me. <laughs> My name is Joel, I'm 18. Uh, my YouTube channel name is The Invention 11 and I'm from Kingston, Ontario. We're working in Steve's house, which means that we have to, we have to deal with a cat and a dog while building. Uh, for the most part, I think, uh, I think the dog tends to get excited when she sees new people and whenever that's not happening, she's usually pretty chill, so it's, it's okay. Uh, in terms of the cat, um, I'm allergic. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's not been uh, the, the most fun. You want it to like a perfect transfer of energy, basically. Essentially, yeah, because when it's when it's hidden, people won't be able to tell that there's two Rubik's cubes. It'll look like it's just one um, that changes, and it, it actually solves the puzzle in between. And so I want that to truly appear like reality. Would you ever consider doing a household machine in your own house? 
I would probably, my parents would probably not allow a housewife machine in my own house. We've built so much at this point that walking through the house, you have to take different ways than you normally would because there's rails set up or marble tracks. You kind of have to tread with extra caution and that'll only get more and more real as the days go on. For example, we have like rails, like marble track rails, but we put them high enough, like just over six feet so that all of us can walk under them without hitting them. Through the hallway, we're gonna have a putter hit a golf ball that goes all the way down and that way that entire space is cleared because we already have enough trouble trying to get by that hallway by ourselves. We're just trying not to hit each other, but if we make that clear without any machine stuff there, then that will be you know, a little less problematic. It's really tough to gauge how long it will take, and sometimes the final stretches of a build are the longest, just because you really want to make everything perfect, you really want to make everything reliable, and you really want to make everything look exactly the way you want to. It kind of feels like every project as we get closer to the end it's we're not quite as far as we thought we were and then we always have to spend that like late night um, fixing things or finishing up the last section. Mark I think you have a solution right? Yes. How does it work? Oh the wiener hits the screen and it just works. <laughs> oh it has to be a kind of an angle though. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Can't play for more than five seconds it's copyright. Oh he scrolled. Ah. There we go. <laughs> um, here we'll try a direct impact. Wow, it worked. Oh, wow. maybe we should go for a direct wiener impact. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the direct wiener is the way to go. Uh, this is way better than the style. There's no way. <laughs> this is way more. This is way better than the style. The favorite one that I've done so far is definitely the knife that like stabs down into the cutting board. The knife in the kitchen, that's a pretty cool one. Knife dropping trick. The knife. A knife trick where it stabs a block of wood. I wanted some more danger. As a film major, when you can see like this one really long take, one continuous take of all this stuff working, um, it's really satisfying. But of course, it's not gonna work on the first try, so every fail is just like another practice run for filming. What's so nice about having so many different takes is that you get so used to the path of the machine um, and its little intricacies and how fast this ball is gonna roll um, and how fast this thing swings around the corner. So it'll only get better and better the more fails uh, we have. When I'm running around a corner while filming or entering a new room, we tried to put some delayed reactions in those spaces to give me plenty of time to make those movements. One point where I'm filming, there's a marble going around in a funnel and I have to step over the couch while I'm filming. And then there's one section when we exit the kitchen when we have honey rolling slowly down a ramp. And that is going to be the only place where I have to pass the camera to someone else because there's no way for me to get out of the kitchen. Last year in the lemonade machine, we had a couple of tricks that just um, failed way more often than the rest of them. I have to imagine that we're gonna experience something like that again. It could be the wind-up toys that start to fail on us. Cut. The predictions for filming day, um, it will fail. There is, there is a little doubt in my mind that it will fail. So I'm gonna say we have about 77 fails. I'm gonna guess total fail count uh, will be around 90. I would say around 100. Fail prediction, uh, 101. Definitely more than 100. Um, hopefully less than 200. Hopefully low, low hundreds, 113. 
best case scenario if we can get it under 100. Um, but I would say my true estimate would be somewhere between 150 and 200. Cut. 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 Da, 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 da. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 yeah.